and they've got no means of getting, the Allies got no means of getting any closer to those aircraft factories deep in Germany. How are you going to do it? It's a real problem. But what they have got is some amazing fighter pilots. I mean, this, of course, is Gabby Gabreski, who's one of the great aces. You know, he's uh, the highest scoring ace and does um, um, a huge amount of ass on his logbook by, by the autumn of 1943. You've got Bob Johnson, another great ace of the 56th fighter group. Um, you've got my favorite, Don Blakesley. He was just a complete dude. Uh, um, had been in the Eagle squadrons, you know, tough as old boots. You know, there's nothing he didn't know about flying an aircraft. Just loved air fighting, just couldn't get enough of it. And I love this picture here. This is, of course, is a four fighter group at Debden. There's Blakesley uh, talking to his men. Jimmy Goodson there leaning on his knee with the pencil fin moustache. I mean, these guys are proper heroes. And, you know, they, they look cool, don't they? They just they look like a generation ahead of the Luftwaffe with their kind of britches and, and jack boots and so on. And, and even to a certain extent, the, the RAF with their battle dress. I mean, these guys, they, they look ultra modern for 1943. They look confident. They look cocky. They look like they know what they're about. And of course, they are all those things. I mean, to put this in some perspective, there is not a single uh, American fighter pilot that is arriving in the UK without at least 350 hours in their logbook. That is a huge number. You think the Battle of Britain days, 1940, both Luftwaffe and British fighter pilots, they're 150, 170. By this stage, a new fighter pilot joining the Luftwaffe has got about 90 to 100. So that is a massive discrepancy. And actually, that 350 hours applies to the RF as well. I mean, these guys are seriously good. 